reduced pay plan changes was 30,000 and all other changes netted to about 12,000. On the operating side, the city clerk had a $10,000 increase in her estimate for the general election expense. Um, she was comparing it to some items she, the last time they had a large um, general election, and she carried that forward to say that it would probably cost a little bit more this time around. <laughs> Urban design, they've delayed their comp planning, so that saved um, 65,000 of operating expense. And then various other operating expenses went down 20,000. We already talked about the capital outlay, and on the transfer side, we just talked about those, those items. So if you're comfortable with all of these changes, uh, this, this, these affect zero service level changes. No service levels stay the same. Mm -hmm. If you're comfortable with these changes since we presented the long range financial plan in February, um, we would like a affirmative uh, vote on at least these changes as we put the budget together. Can we get um, a bottom line of how this reflects on what was originally outlined and then also what this means in terms of the millage rate potential for next year? So keeping the millage rate the same with the estimated increase of a 6% would not, none of these changes would affect the millage rate. So okay. we still have to use $226,000 of reserves. And I can go back to that slide. Okay. Um, so the 417-19 column includes these changes. Okay. So that's where we're at. Okay. So we would, if we do nothing else, which, well, we are going to do something else, but let's say we do nothing else. We would, we would budget 226805 in reserves. Budget those dollars to balance the budget. That doesn't mean we use them. Mm -hmm. We just budget it. Okay. That's where we would stand if you approve all of those initial changes. Well, do we want to continue this discussion so we can see what the overall impact, or do if you If you'd like, if you'd like, but that's up to you. Um, we would go, we're going to go line item by line item. Uh, on on the next on set. the next on the next one yes um, comments on this particular page that um, Howard is I'm fine with this page oh, the staff okay. recommendations there we go Betty Jerry on Lynn? this particular page regarding personal expenditures I have no issue okay. yeah <clears throat> I didn't have any either um, on this particular one just, just this set. Just that set. Yeah. Um, okay is there? Do you, you want to vote on that or just? Yes. yes. Yeah, I would. <coughs> I'll make a motion to approve this page only. Okay. Can you put that page back up? Yes. Um. So I have it up here on an Excel document. Let me see if I can make oh, it. Oh, just all you have to do is page up. Page up to where just you. Page have up. It. It's right here. It's under personnel expenditures, yep. LRFP, okay. and, yep. and it's just that from. Uh, row, from, from it's row, row 37 to 43. No, you went past it. No, it goes all the way down to this whole page will go down to line, ni line item 98. Well, what he had on, what you showed on the PowerPoint, Howard was asking us, are you asking for the whole page? Yeah, actually, yes. Yeah. The whole well, page. I, I can't. The, whole, the PowerPoint was just a summary, but it was all those items, and all those items are here. So if I go back to the PowerPoint. Okay. So that would include, it's, if we ha if you go to this page, page, it's the page uh, under general fund, and it includes. It's not just. So it's. Um, yeah, it's all of the all of these. I, I have issues with anything that has to do with the drainage pro. Okay, so let's just do personnel first. Okay. <laughs> So under personnel, um, we talked about the unemployment compensation, um, the police pension, fire pension, union contract, p other pay plan changes. Well, does anybody else have any issues with anything on that page? No. Not so far. Maybe we can make this quicker. Okay. okay. I have you? Here, we'll do each, we can do each one of these um, slides, well, maybe, which are the same things. Well, Howard was saying on this particular page that you said, 
If we had, uh, excuse me, the, the first page that you went through all of these, yes. where it had to do with the, um, the roads, the drainage, and all of that, um, did anybody have any issues which got you to the 226805? Does anybody have any issues with anything on that page? And Gary is saying he has something to do I, with I'm the I'm saying drainage. that the, the issues regarding the drainage program are okay. something that are, I can't uh, get past right now. So um, we are going to bring up the drainage program on a future slide as well. This particular, what we're already showing here, is just to bring it down from 500 to 350, but we do bring it up as a service level alternative reduction. We are going to bring it up later. So the, so the 350 is going to be coming up later. Yes. 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 Mm -hmm. So I'm already agreeing to a 150 reduction, and yes. I get a chance to yes. express my feelings about the, the, the remaining 350. Yes. Correct. Yes. yes. Okay, I can go forward at this time. Okay. So then what I'm hearing is on all of the items, personnel, operating, <coughs> uh, expenditures, all of this that gets us to use of reserves of 226.805. I'm hearing a, that a consensus. Do you want to make a motion to approve that page? Yeah, that's the motion. I made my motion to that, which you just read. Okay, there's been a motion and a second to approve this page. <coughs> All in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Okay. Motion carries. Okay. Thank you. <coughs> now we're going to go line item by line item. So um, then we also just given you a comparison from fiscal year 19 original budget to um, what you all have just approved for fiscal year 2020. So personnel from fiscal year 19 to fiscal year 2020 will go up approximately 3.5%. Operating from 4582 to 4780 would be approximately 4.3%. So total operations overall 3.3%. Then I wanted to give you a look of where we're at with our operating reserves. So at fiscal year 19, our current estimated ending reserves are approximately $3.8 million. Um, at the end of fiscal year 19, we expect to have our capital outlay reserve of $440,000, which is set aside for the capital outlay plan. Then approved use of reserves, and I rounded here, this is the 226.805, just rounded to 227. And then less our 8.5% uh, minimum mm -hmm of um, ending reserve for fiscal year 2020 would be one point, almost 1.9. So our estimated ending reserves available for allocation are approximately 1.3 million. We're gonna go into some other personnel considerations that um, we may want to add to the budget right now or um, discuss. Um, so the first one is we currently are still in nego negotiations with our police union. At this time, we're suggesting maybe we might want to add $120,000 to the budget for the for that type of item. We so have. We'll, you want to go through each one? Okay. We we'd like some uh, a yes no maybe on that. You want us to do that right now? Yep, each, each line item. Well, so I don't we think that we have any uh, choice, in my yeah, opinion. I don't think so either. <laughs> it's so again, this hundred, since we are in negotiations, it could be more or less, but this is what we're suggesting at this time. I'm not comfortable making that decision at this moment. I mean, we, don't, we have no idea where this is going. But we need a placeholder. Yeah, I understand, but if it's not enough, then what? Then we have to adjust it again? Uh, yep. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. So are you looking for votes or are you looking for just head nods at this point? Well, we'd like a vote so we can at least... A, a vote on each one of these? Yes. Okay. So we have yes, maybe, or no columns. So we could always come back to something if you're not comfortable making a full decision. Okay. Well, I have confidence in our, our budget people that they... They had to base this on something, so I think as a placeholder, I'm okay with it. It's, I mean, it, it, it's not final. We can make adjustments. 
but I think this your, 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 we're as giving you an indication of where we're. As their best guess at this point in time. Yeah. I would say yes. Yeah. Okay. So. Okay, we're okay. We're okay, so we can just. Yep, we're okay with that's that good one. enough, okay. okay. Um, the fire pension went down this year and we also had included in your packet or in the agenda item showing several years worth of different light items. And the fire pension can fluctuate from year to year um, quite drastically. With some of the changes that were just made, um, we're trying to ask if we could include $100,000 in the budget this year that would be carried over to following 2021. But this will help smooth that pension spike that we might expect to see in fiscal year 21, as well as if the state insurance money um, comes in less than projected, the city has to make up that amount. And that happened last fiscal year and fiscal year 18, which caused um, us to have to find other funds to cover that. So we are suggesting to put 100,000 or some number in to help with that, those items. We realized that the actuarial study showed a $107,000 reduction you, that you previously okayed. Mm -hmm. From a fiscal management standpoint, we're not comfortable with, uh, with just that. Uh, we'd like to smooth it out to uh, mitigate what might happen in the future, and it also helps our unfunded actuarial liability. That's our thought process. Makes sense to me. That makes sense. Mm -hmm. From a fiscal, yeah, that makes sense. Or by are you getting enough head knots here? Yes. Okay. Yeah. Makes sense. Okay. All right. Um, our human resource um, manager, who is also our public risk manager, has come back to us and is indicating that for the health insurance, we will possibly see a 12% increase rather than the 6% that we've had in our pro forma in our proposed budget. So at this time, we're asking if we could actually add that into our budget. Um, he doesn't usually find that information out until um, June sometime, but it would help us to plan. If we so for planning purposes. Mm -hmm. And do we feel that we're the, the pool that we're in is the still the best yeah, possible arrangement for us? We're small. I don't see how we could go it alone. The pool helps mitigate when you have when you don't have good years. Mm -hmm. We've not had a good year. In the past few years, we've had good years. So, and we've taken advantage of those good years. So mm -hmm. the pool helps uh, minimize those increases when you have a not so good year. Mm -hmm. And um, we feel we, we need to put those dollars in the budget um, because it's coming. Mm -hmm. If you're, that's what you're foreseeing. It's fine. You had nods? Yep. Okay. okay. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Um, during the long range plan, um, it was suggested possibly adding, um, instead of a 3% merit, having a 4% merit for general employees, which would add an additional 1% on the general employee side. Let me see what that cost would be. Um, to the general fund and citywide. The reason um, we are recommending this is that when we did the Cody study a couple years ago and when we implemented it last year, for the general employees, we did not uh, budget and bring them up to as uh, exactly as to what the Cody study recommended. Mm -hmm. We did some tweaking for, for specific uh, employees who've been here since fiscal year 2009 through the whole downturn. And uh, when we presented the long range financial plan, we told you that we were gonna recommend instead of a 3% merit that we've been holding to for a number of years now, a couple years, that we wanted to go to a 4% merit. When we did the fire union contract, we did bring them up to much closer to what the Cody study had. When we're looking at the police union negotiations, we're gonna bring them up to much closer to what the Cody study had. We didn't do that with the general employees. And I think in, in our recommendation is we need to bring the general employees uh, closer to what the Cody study had 
and we feel that 1% is at least getting started on doing that. I agree. I think any business anywhere in this country will tell you that the value of employees to the business is unmeasurable, and we have some of the best employees. I, th I think this is long overdue, and I'm all in favor. I concur. Concur? Yeah. Okay. Um, the next couple are things we've had in the past. Um, we haven't brought it forward in, in quite a few years, but if we were trying to offset something, um, these are a couple options. Reduction of city paid dependent health coverage from 50% to 45%. Those would affect the employees that have dependent coverage, as well as reduction from city paid depend dependent dental from 50% to 45%. Uh, we've shown these in the past. Uh, we've, we've continually kept it at 50%. Um, it's competitive with the surrounding area. If you are looking at some reductions to try and mitigate some of these other increases we talked about, um, this is what a 5% impact would be. What's your pleasure? I think we have to consider it. Are we taking away the, rate, the increase we just gave them? <laughs> uh, if, if they have dependent health care, yes, okay. you would be taking it away. Um, so, you know, where are we uh, competitive-wise? I understand it's one thing to, to provide something to the actual employee, but to provide for the dependents of the employee. I've never had a job where, the, where any dependents were covered. It was, always, it, was, it was always at our expense. I mean, when I first started, yeah, but it eventually got taken away. So I, yeah. any dependent coverage. And never dental. Right. I never had dental coverage. Oh my gosh. I'm Bill lucky. Wicks from HR uh, Manager. I was going to say, I've had, I've, had I've had a different experience. I've always had it. My I had experience it at first, is that my, got my children, my wife and children are usually covered. Yeah, mm -hmm. me too. Um, our surrounding counterparts, so to speak, are all at least 50%. Our sheriff's office pays 100% of dependent coverage. Mm. Um, so that's health and dental. Um, Everyone else in the surrounding area with whom we compete for employees is at, is at least 50%. Uh, the county does it a little different way in the sense that they have a clinic, uh, but they're fully self-funded. They, mm -hmm. and so that you can play with those figures to show a savings, but in reality you're not. It's mm -hmm. a, you, the money has to come from somewhere. But um, the 50% is not a is not at all unusual. Um, in my private sector experience, I paid nineteen dollars a month for dependent coverage. So, you, you know, uh, for a family right now, depending on the plan you have, you're looking at around three hundred a month so, for dependent coverage. So, if that helps any. It's kind of a um, for me. It's on a maybe, but I think you know if we're trying to get the employees up, and if if that's one thing that. Maybe we can hold on to this for now, but keep it as something that, if we need to look at it, but. Yeah, so from here, I, hear, I have one maybe. Yeah, I guess I'd have to say maybe, I, because I, I, I mean, I, while it's something really nice to give them as a benefit, um, that is one of the things, I mean, we are gonna have to seriously take a look at how all these increases are gonna affect the millage rate. That's what the bottom line really is right. to me. I mean, I understand we have to do these line by line, but. I, I would say one other thing that I think Bill would maybe agree as far as recruiting and everything like that, sometimes, um, especially when you're in the government sector and having a little bit less of a salary, mm -hmm. it's a little bit of a draw to help have that. And especially if with other government sectors in the area, having the same type of plans the fifty percent. If you have a little bit less, it mm -hmm. might. We need to be know. competitive. Yeah, yeah. yeah. it's a tight job market right now too. I mean, the people that we're hiring. Uh, we're, we're. I mean, we're sitting here and we, we're retired or semi-retired for the most of us, not all of us, but most of us. And but we grew up and we raised our families and and at least in my case, 
I've received this type of benefit that was part of a competitive salary. We know that we're a little bit lower than most people around us, and we don't want to shoot ourselves in the foot, I don't think, and make ourselves less competitive. This is the type of thing that it, it builds more morale than it does, I think, in cost, mm -hmm. and I think that we should maintain it. I'm for maintaining it. So I'm seeing three for sure, or maintain it. Then I guess it's it's maintain it, but it's it. Well, it means we'll just it see means where we go with this. Yeah, not three. Yeah, we'll put it in a maybe column for now. Okay. It's not a yes, and it's almost a no, but we'll put it in a maybe. Oh, I don't know if it, it's. I think it's, it's really a yes. Yeah, I think three. Yeah, I think it's yes. more almost a yes, but I think it's we just no, need no. to. No, no. Yes, meaning you. You're willing to reduce it? No, meaning no. Oh, no, no, we no, don't no, want to no, reduce no, 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 it. No, no, I said. Okay, I got you. Oh, I see what you're saying. Yeah. Gotcha, gotcha. Oh, take the negative. That okay, okay, gotcha. All right. Okay, I got gotcha. it. Gotcha. Okay, I know where we're going with it. Okay. Okay. <laughs> <coughs> okay. Uh, moving on. Um, these are service level, we're going into service level enhancements. Um, they are recommended by the city manager, but again, we'll take each one individually and all the department heads and division um, are here to talk about anything that you may have questions on. So the first one is an engineering tech position. Um, for the general fund, it would be a 0.5 FTE net increase. They are proposing to share the building's part-time line and grade position. Um, building department has been having a hard time filling that position that was approved previously. Um, and then for the engineering side, in the general fund, this position had previously been eliminated in fiscal year 2014. Since 2014, commercial construction permits has steadily increased, which require more um, inspections due to NPDES requirements. And it will allow duties absorbed by the project managers um, previously from the other elimination to be redistributed, allowing more time at job sites. The net effect for the general fund is $34,090. So the engineering tech would be in public works? It would, uh, public works Split and building. between public works and building? Both. Mm -hmm. They would work part-time in both. Our city engineer can talk more about it, but we just can't get anybody part-time over in building to do this job. Mark Gehring, Public Works. We will actually be housing the person full-time in engineering. We'll take that responsibility back, which we, we transferred to the building department several years ago. That inspector will work entirely within engineering. But now the building department is an enterprise fund, so that's, are, is the building department going to then pay? Half of it, yes. They're going to, okay. Half of the position. Okay. So, yeah. Okay. You have to be very careful when you use building fees that they have to directly relate to a building related service. Yes. I mean, it's very strict. Okay. <clears throat> this makes sense to me. Um, and I know how much work we're piling on to Mark. So this will help you out, right, Mark? <laughs> what, uh, what about the rest of you? I'm fine. Okay. All right. Um, this one you'll remember from last year was the EMS training chief in the fire department to coordinate fire EMS training with a focus on high risk job functions such as ALS, medication administrations, technical rescue skills, and, assume, and assuring compliance. Um, we put the first year's costs in there, um, as, so between the ongoing costs and the one-time costs in fiscal year 2020, the impact would be 148300 but ongoing just for the position would be 106700 There is a memo here attached to it. Uh, our fire chief can speak more about it. You heard about it last year. Mm -hmm. uh, didn't quite make it for reasons that we now know, the master plan and then the seawall replacement, both mm -hmm. it's back in front of you again. So again, we spoke about it last year. This was a position that um, we had in 2008. It was eliminated with the economic downturn. Um, since then, call volumes have increased by almost 50%. Um, in addition to that, the acuity of the call, really, we've, we've um, gone to the advanced life support. So when you think about patients, 
that now um, come home just maybe the day of surgery or the day after. So the acuity of call that we see um, is much different than it was since 2008. So again, with the addition of advanced life support, again, these folks are carrying 23 separate medications doing you know, work in the field that was only done in the hospital previously. So um, I need direct oversight with that, and this will help. So uh, that's where we are. Chief, Thanks. can you de can you define one-time costs? What would be in included in that number? Actually, Kristen, probably yes. better suited. For okay, that. sorry. Thank you. The one-time cost was um, adding the position. They would need one additional um, vehicle for that person, as well as the uniforms, the radio, the computer. So um, okay. those types of items are what's included in that one-time cost. Okay. Mm -hmm. The biggest portion is the vehicle at this mm -hmm. point. So. Clearly not salary, or I'm going to apply for that position. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, and you, you so aptly uh, described the difference in the environment that we're in today. Right. And what you, you know, with our advanced life support and all of it that we do, um, that we didn't do That's correct. many years ago. Right. And so, again, what, I'm, what I need is that more direct oversight. When we talk about training, we talk about supplies, medications that expire, um, technical skills that are involved with it. And right now, it's we have um, some FTOs that are, are paid uh, shift FTOs that, that help out with some of that. But we end up running essentially kind of three separate departments, if that makes sense, with three separate shifts. We need, we need somebody to bring all that together. Will this person be a fire medic so that they For can sure. be on scene if need? And by the way, Absolutely. thank you to you guys for being first on scene at the structure fire this week. Yeah, that was a, you, you a saved, big deal. You saved a lot of people's houses. Uh, thank you. Yes. Good Absolutely. job. Thanks. Great job. Okay, what's your pleasure here? I think we put it in for right now and, you and know, see where hope it goes. we don't have to remove it again this year. But, okay. yeah, that's my... my I, I, I'm in agreement with that. Yeah. I think... Um, Okay, the next we're going to go on to the police department and their needs and currently um, they are requesting a dispatcher, a one full-time FTE. This is a phase two, so um, I think it was about two years ago they did increase one dispatcher and they're asking for an additional one due to increased call volume, service handling, they will relieve the supervisor to manage reporting and quality assurance reviews and they don't really have any um, one-time costs, so that's 62000 and would you like to hear about all their needs first or go through each one? Why don't we go through each one? Okay. Because the police chief is here. When we, by the way, to remind everybody out there in the audience, when you see a number of 62,000, that is not somebody's salary. That's fully loaded. That, that, and that's fully loaded. Mm -hmm. That includes all of the benefits, uh, uh, operating costs associated with that position. Good afternoon, yeah. Pam Davis, uh, Punta Gorda Police Chief. So the dispatcher, you guys saw this morning, we had a proclamation, all the hours and, and the amount of things that they handle. We have the nine dispatchers and the one supervisor, but over since I've been here, that supervisor sat on the console more than they've been a supervisor, and that concerns me a lot because we're not really doing those quality assurance checks that we need to be doing as much of, um, as well as just in general, <laughs> You need a supervisor in there. So um, we're asking to to have another dispatcher added so that we can really have the amount of staffing in there that we need to handle. Particularly if you're getting all those calls at once, we can have three people working in there at one time. Mm -hmm. I definitely support this one. Yes. Me too. Yep. No problem. Okay. Good timing to have the oh, proclamation today. Uh, <laughs> and, and no, I, would have, I would have supported it anyway. I mean, I've, I've seen Audrey... Mm -hmm. having to relinquish her job as supervisor just to... And it is a stressful job. Yes, it is. I mean, it's, yeah. you have to be on yeah. at all we times. Mm -hmm. um, the next position is the employment, employee, employee development coordinator. Sorry, a little tongue tied. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So it's a one FTE, and it would reclassify a sworn position to a civilian position, which would free up a sworn position for the community engagement program, which we'll go over in just a moment. Um, again, this one would not have any one-time costs. Um, it would be eighty-one thousand dollars. Why don't you show the next one? Because they're kind of tied together. Mm -hmm. So then, for the community engagement officer, um, 
program, when Chief um, brought it to you last year, she was requesting two engagement officers. So by switching the sworn personnel to a civilian position, that would free up the one sworn officer plus adding one additional sworn officer would be able to um, start that program. Again, it would allow proactive policing to focus on city hotspots, engage more with community special enforcement activities. And again, um, the annual costs are approximately 78,350 and the one-time costs are 57,000. So that's where we get the 135. Um, the one-time costs again include the vehicle, uniforms, radio, um, the, the phone, um, computer, all those types of items. And, and I did talk to you about this last year and various times throughout the year. Community engagement unit, think about the homeless at Gilcrest, think about the traffic enforcement that we get, call, get called on upon all the time. Hey, we have a lot of problems with speeding. Um, another prostitution over on Cooper Street, Th different things that are going on that our officers could go out and they, they're on patrol, they'll, they'll go out and then do what they can to enforce whatever's going on, but there's no long-term solutions. They, we can't really focus, we don't have the staff to focus somebody to handle that, to come up with the solutions or to do a full investigation on it. Our CIS, yes, they're investigators, but they're investigating all the, the different, you know, cases that are out there with our felony cases and things. So we're struggling in that area. So in order to kind of do a little bit of a cost saving, I know because I'm coming back and asking for it again, I, we found that if we could civilianize our, our employee development coordinator, which is our trainer, they do the recruitment, they do, um, they help with our promotions and basically just keep track of everything that's going on with, that we have to for FDLE. Um, we think that could be civilianized. It'll help us also have that person focus just strictly on training as opposed to pulling them to do different things as well. Um, so that's what I'm, we're looking at as far as that, that's concerned. And Councilman Wine, do you have a question? Too? Yeah, sure, I have a question. So by, by going this route, this enables you to be more proactive than reactive in uh, various, because we're already a safe city, but you're, it allows you to be proactive yes. to maintain we that. We don't want to become unsafe in any area. So being proactive and, and hitting those things that might be just popping up a little bit and, and ending it helps us be proactive and keep us from any kind of So know, would, it be, would it be more economical to go this way or to build a moat around <laughs> Punta Gorda so there's only a uh, toll bridge to get in? I could get you all to help us build a moat. That'd be great. <laughs> <laughs> this, I, I, we think this is going to be a great program if we can get it up and running. I absolutely agree, obviously. <laughs> And Quick question. Yes, ma'am. If we add these officers, are we going to have a dedicated marine officer at that time? Yes, because and, uh, we're so getting that's a actually lot a good of heat. point that you brought up. <coughs> um, what happened over the last year? We actually were fully staffed on paper. We were great. We had our new officers were in training. You guys remember me bringing them in. Mm -hmm. And what happened? Four regular full time officers went out on either long term disability. One was pregnant, and then one um, had a light duty assignment. So imagine our staff of 37 and pulling four of them off, and one of them was a school resource officer. Two of them were school resource officers. So we are obligated to fulfill the contract for the school resource officers, which is six in the schools. That's where our Marine, we had, I have no cushion to pull any staff from to fill those places where we absolutely, which is patrol and the schools. So that's where the Marine officer Unfortunately, that it, it, we had to reallocate at that point. So but we will have a 40-hour so, a week police yes, officer. Yes, he's already out there. He's back out on the on, okay. on the water. And um, hopefully we won't have these long-term things again, but if it happens, at least having the community <coughs> engagement unit, that's where we're going to pull from. Chief Great. Davis, I just want to thank you for the light reading material. Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah, right. I have, I have seen hey, justifications have for a job, but my <laughs> goodness gracious. <laughs> wanted you to have something to do. Thanks, <laughs> I needed In our that. spare time. I just put it under my pillow. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. um, is, the, is it typical that the education uh, position would be a non-sworn? It, it is. You can, different agencies will make them civilianized. Um, as a matter of fact, when I came from Baltimore, I was actually a civilian in Baltimore. Okay. So as their professional development training person, I, it was a civilian position. Okay, okay. 
Okay, so what's your pleasure here? Yes. Yes. Definitely. Yes. yes. Okay. It's a it's a thumbs up. Good well, well, good sales job. I wouldn't. <laughs> don't sit down yet. <laughs> oh, body cameras. No body cameras. I don't. Do we need to discuss that? Oh. Okay. Well, you, if you don't, I mean, we're recommending now that we now is the time where we're comfortable going with body cameras because of the cost, and we're also going to be applying for a grant. So we are recommending moving forward. And this is certainly a national best practice. Um, we already have in-car cameras. Sometimes we have a lot of issues with them, and then we can't get produce the video. We think going to body cameras yeah. is technologically sound is the way to go. Mm -hmm. I think it's gonna. It can also help the, the officers. Transparency. It'll help the officers. Yes. Their case enhancements. Professionalism. Mm -hmm. Hopefully, reduce complaints. So it's, it's definitely right. something. I agree. No brainer. Okay. Mm -hmm. Thank, Thank you. you. And, and just to um, let you know how we're going to do this one is we're going to put it back into the capital outlay program so that way it'll again smooth the funding to be 40,000 per year versus the 55, 33. So it, again, it'll be smooth. Um, the next one is the urban design plotter. And um, it was requested through IT. However, also utilities was requesting one and they're the two divisions that actually use plotters. So we suggested that it was um, each one should just pay for their own because if we put it in through IT, the general funds portion is almost 73%, it's about 72.5%. So um, it was actually more economical to, for the plotter to be purchased by the general fund and the utilities want to be purchased by the utilities fund. So they're buying their own. Yes. IT will still service it. Got it. But it's not something like those those two plotters are just for those two divisions so mm -hmm. it makes sense that they just stay that way it's not like every division has a plotter how often are they used oh. a lot oh. a lot so outsourcing it would not be a good thing okay no. okay they they're the ones who make all these beautiful maps <coughs> um for planning and zoning needs um mm -hmm. they do signage that goes up in our parks um gis Citizen requests sometimes come through them. Okay. A lot. Yeah, it's used a lot. What's the condition of the current one? <laughs> the current one as it states right now. Your oh, name? Julie Ryan for the record. Um, it's working. What happens with these types of equipment is you can buy a warranty, and but sooner or later the warranty becomes ineffective because that model is out of place. Right. Um, but to service one of these would be almost as much as replacing it. Um, so right now the current loan that we have does work, but it is out of warranty. So if something was to happen to it, mm -hmm. um, it would be you know cost prohibitive for us to actually fix it. Having come from the technology field, I know once things are not being supported, it's really gets expensive. So yeah. I'm in favor of that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Gary? Okay. Okay. Thank you. Um, we did put a, sl uh, a slide in here about the citywide master plan. Again, we have no idea what's going to come out of the citywide master plan, but we just thought, just to keep it in the forefront of our minds, um, that that is still on the horizon, but it's not currently in the budget. Um, we have a service level change recommended by the city manager. So for the service level change, um, it, it's kind of like you would do both possibly, is the elimination of the community branding of Aqua. It's $111,000 that's currently in the budget. It was 81,000 for Aqua and 30,000 for the options of um, various items. And then um, taking it in-house by adding a communications budget so you'd have in-house marketing and a communications program. So uh, our communications manager is here. Um, we're asking you to, um, if, we, if we take the second bullet, we're not saying the service is necessarily going to get reduced. It's just a change in how we're doing the program. 
Right. Um, we have absolutely no issue with the service, or at least I have no issue with the services that we've been receiving from Aqua. Um, under their contract, we would be able to do a significantly um, larger amount of marketing of the community. I was asked to prepare a secondary budget that would establish a budget for the department that allows us to do some of the things that are recommended by Aqua. It continues our brand, our branding program, our marketing of the community, but it also allows us to do some things locally. Um, one of the gaps we noticed this last year, we really wanted to do some printing so that we could market the um, citywide master plan. We had no dollars budgeted in our communications budget that would allow us to do that. Um, some of those things were overlooked, and I have included those types of things. Advertising in um, local publications makes a lot of sense to partner with someone else. We weren't, we haven't been doing that over the past few years, and this, the this budget would allow us to do that. So, in a nutshell, you can uh, eliminate one hundred eleven thousand dollars from a proposed budget and add back sixty one thousand. I am so in favor of this. I know Melissa has no issues with them, but I have, I have a folder full of issues with them, starting with the fact that since November 7th, we've been asking for numbers. We have yet to receive the first deliverable, I believe that's what the gentleman called it. We've not seen anything. Melissa told me the other day that she hasn't seen anything. Um, You know, let's don't even consider the fact that they're not uh, advertising us honestly. They're showing us with blue water and couples walking on sandy beaches when I've not seen that anywhere in Gilchrist Park. I think that Melissa could do at least as good, if not better job. I know she'd be a lot more responsive. Uh, having been uh, a part of the, the, one, the original One Community One message team, that recommended that we have some kind of a program and then we did commit to a three-year program. Um, there's one side of me that says, but it's a three-year program. But on the other hand, um, I think times change and, it, and we are able, now that we have the communications manager position that we so much wanted and recommended, um, we're able to use Melissa's expertise to be able to then more truly customize uh, an ongoing program. And I think it's, um, uh, much more personalized. I think it, it makes sense. I agree, and we we hired Aqua to rebrand the city. They've done that. Mm -hmm. We now have a very, very, very capable person in that position locally that can pick up the ball and run with it mm -hmm. and, and market mm -hmm. the city the way we can control it, and we'll have hands-on, day-to-day feedback from her that we know is tangible. And uh, if we and need I, and Aqua I, for a task, we, we can do that. Yeah, I, I would say yes to both of these items. I can be fine with um, Melissa, but I do think we need to maintain a relationship with Aqua. I say this because they are doing the county, mm -hmm. and I think it's very important that, that we don't lose an active relationship with them. Right? I think that like for Melissa to be able to do her job the best is going to still require some relationship of some kind with Aqua. I'm I'm hearing, I would uh, agree with that. Oh, okay, I'm, I'm hearing yeses, but you know, I'm I'm not going to give a no. Don't worry about that. Okay, um, <clears throat> you know, as you go through life, you live and you learn. And in hindsight, etc. Uh, and uh, and I've mentioned this to uh, to Howard. If if I had to do it over again, I wouldn't have even done the branding thing until we'd finished the citywide planning issue. But we we did we did the and it made sense at the time. We have different talent in place. So we can build on what we've got, but I do agree with Jaha that we should maintain some formal relationship, particularly when we do get the citywide plan done, and that becomes more holistically. We may want to be able to use them as that a little bit of expertise to to give to give you that extra oomph because you've got other responsibilities also too. So uh, <clears throat> uh, I'm a yes. Okay. Okay. All right. So we're saying yes to both. eliminating the contract. Yes, to both yes, of those. Yes, to yes. both. Okay. Mm -hmm. okay. Okay. Moving on, we have our service level reductions. Um, none of these are recommended by the city manager because staffing and operations um, are already lean due to previous year's reductions in efficiencies. 
Um, and again, based on our community expectations to retain current level of services. So um, we'll go through the, the first three are service level reductions for the drainage. One is the drainage program. Um, but I, as you we know, better do these one at a time. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> You Earlier, got somebody bouncing over. we <laughs> talked about reducing it from 500 to 350. Here is the, um, uh, you know, changing it even further. So you could go from zero to 350,000 on this particular program. Uh, Mr. Wine. Uh, thank you. I think uh, reducing 150,000 is going the right direction, but it's nowhere near close enough. I mean, we used to have a, a municipal program. I don't remember, was it 15, 20,000 dollars a year? It was decided that it was difficult uh, for whatever reasons because of construction and a number of other is issues. We were having flooding that were becoming a nuisance for a number of our, our uh, residents in, uh, in Punta Gorda, particularly in the, uh, the Isles and uh, I believe the BS BSI areas because of construction, et cetera. Mm -hmm. um, Seminole Legs, or not Seminole Legs, but um, Restaurant Meadows and... Exactly. <laughs> you know. Quite a few areas. Yeah, quite a few areas. areas. Yeah, and it wasn't. It wasn't just you know. Mm -hmm. But but with that said, was is it was difficult. Uh, uh, I'm responsible for maintaining my swell swale. Uh, I also have a little bit of a concern about the way we measure it. I understand we take the TV camera and if there's water left after 72 hours, uh, but sometimes I think that maybe that should be a repeated that it needs to show that that's happened two or three times because it is possible that the camera came around right after somebody watered their lawn and there may have been a little bit of puddle left. Mm -hmm. I don't think that that's the normal case, but I do think that that may have happened, at least on my block one time, because my block didn't have any experience that I've been aware of since 2000 of any drainage issues, and they all drain through my soil that I've been ma maintaining. Um, and also, I think there's an inequity because, uh, for example, uh, I know of uh, one of my neighbors who put in a new sod and it wasn't graded properly and the contractor had to pull the sod up, regrade the swale and put it down. Or somebody whose swale is already not graded properly, uh, if they wait long enough, the city will do it for them uh, at a charge to the city as a whole, the city constituents as a whole. I find this more of a, um, an enforcement issue than, than something that the city should be taking on itself. If we do it and back charge, I don't have a problem with that, but uh, I'm not sure that that's doable. But I do not think that this is, and particularly in light of, and, this, and I've made this point before, we are running what is considered a less than optimum reserve. Uh, we have been since 2008. We do increase it up a little bit each year, but this is 2019 now. This is 11 years later. Uh, and we don't have that reserve up to normal. There's a number of reasons of, uh, with that. And as we pointed out today, and I commend our staff over and over and over again, we run so lean. I commend Howard's leadership. I commend all of your efforts. We run so lean that we don't, if we have another financial downturn, not only do we not have enough reserve, but we don't have personnel to cut. Because they're already cut. And they've been cut since 2008. So we don't have any buffer there either. So we are even more vulnerable in my mind than we were in 2008. And then that's gonna re require some very painful decisions on uh, council at the time if, if, if and when that downturn ever does occur, which it probably will, because it's a normal cycle of events. We should be prepared for it and we're not prepared now. And this is one area where I think that we can uh, uh, save considerable strides. And I haven't changed my position. I think it's been clear and I hope it's still clear. Okay, so I'm a no. Nancy. Uh, Debbie. When I looked at this list that Howard gave us, mm -hmm. I had to ask myself, okay, what's best for the city, for the whole city? Is it better that we have the correct amount of police, dispatchers, and firemen in place, or is it good that we're eliminating water from the front of people's yards who just aren't doing it? And I'm sorry, but I'm with Council Member Wine. I think for the amount that, this, that we're gonna be spending on this, we could almost fully fund the service level enhancements. Um, I have to say, uh, having been the recipient of all the emails from residents who 
were having problems with their uh, drainage. I get what you're saying, Gary. I'm, as a master gardener, people, we should, you know, we know what the problem is, at least in some areas. Um, thatch is the problem. Um, but educating people on, on that and getting people to take action is it was a whole different subject. And so it's going to require a whole different level of enforcement. And I mean, it's a, that's a whole different program than, than what we're talking about. And we have not done that uh, to, to get into a, a proactive. Um, and we have, I know that we have dealt, Mar Mark has dealt with, we have dealt with um, complaint after complaint after complaint with drainage. And um, so when it comes to drainage, um, you know, it's, it's either we pay here or we come up with the drainage assessment. I agree. And, and, but we need I to, but agree. I think we need to do something. Um, and I think Mark, what Mark is doing is recommending a reduction and maybe it can be reduced. Um, maybe there's a way to come up with an educational program, but I don't think we can cut it with nothing because it's, I think it's only going to cause problems and we're just going to go back to where we were. I love the fact that, that IT is coming up with a way that we're going to be able to do this. Um, what the video is going to be more something enhanced that you, when you're recording these, it's going to be different um, in the future. That I think in one of the city reports. Yes, we are, we're taking the drainage videos, which used to be on uh, a standalone computer system and putting them in a GIS where internally in the program we'll show all of our drainage pipes when there's uh, road work for sewers or anything like that. Mm -hmm. It'll all be together in the GIS system. Uh, no change to the cameras or anything. It's software that we already own, but 